Good morning. It's uh, Thursday, February 16th, and uh, this is the second to last uh, legislative update. I can tell you that 1192, which provides uh, uh, the clarification that single member uh, LLCs, uh, uh, credit judgment creditors, are restricted to a charging order. Uh, that was brought to us by the Business Law Committee in order to avoid uh, litigation that's occurring in other states where they're trying to pierce the LLC protection on, on single members. Uh, that was heard about 15 minutes ago in Senate Commerce and uh, received an affirmative vote. It's on the consent calendar. It's already gone through the, through the House. Uh, yesterday afternoon we had an interesting uh, uh, floor fight on uh, House Bill 1055, which is the state bar shared parenting. Uh, there was an attempt on the floor to bootstrap in the language from Senate Bill 60, which was the bad sharing, uh, parenting bill, shared parenting bill. Uh, we defeated that. The, the attempt to amend it only got uh, eight votes, and uh, after we defeated that, um, it passed unanimously. That is through the House also. It was unamended, therefore it will be going downstairs to the second floor for the uh, uh, consideration by the governor, and uh, I'm confident uh, that uh, the governor is going to sign that, that bill. For those of you who don't know what a floor fight is, it's an attempt to do things differently on the floor than what happened up in committee. Uh, it's sometimes likened to a high school cafeteria food fight. Uh, Senate, uh, House Bill 1046, uh, that was the deployment uh, Deployment bill brought by the National Guard. Uh, we had significant concerns about the draft. The chair put that bill on hold. Uh, we spent last weekend, uh, Senator Cutler and myself, the governor's office, working on revisions. Uh, we brought an amendment, a comprehensive amendment that satisfies everybody, protects the best interests of the child, but also uh, protects the interests of the uh, deployed serviceman or woman who is returning from uh, deployment. Uh, that amendment went on and it's on, uh, it's down on the Senate floor uh, where I'm confident it will receive uh, uh, an affirmative vote. Uh, Senate Bill 91, I mentioned this last week, the concern of allowing uh, anybody from a corporation to non-lawyers to appear before the Office of Hearing Examiners uh, and to conduct an appeal on uh, property assessment. Uh, last weekend uh, I drafted a hog house amendment to very much narrow it up. Uh, I sent that out. It was vetted by the Business Law Committee and the Bar Commissioners. Uh, the, choice, the choice facing the State Bar was whether or not uh, uh, given the fact that Senate Bill 91 passed the Senate unanimously uh, whether or not we should try to just kill it outright or whether or not we should proceed with, with uh, the Hog House Amendment that I drafted. The Hog House Amendment, which of course you will not have seen, narrows it down to uh, a corporation with 10 shareholders or fewer, requires notice to the shareholders of the intent to go forward without using the services of a lawyer, and it further requires that it be unanimous. Uh, I drafted it in that fashion to protect minority, minority shareholders and indirectly I drafted it to protect the officer or shareholder who would purport to go ahead and represent uh, saving them from possible litigation because for their ineptitude, if you will, or their non-legal malpractice. Uh, the prime sponsor has agreed uh, to that hog house, and so next week uh, uh, the good senator and I will show up in House Judiciary with the hog house and ask the uh, committee to put that on. Um, the Senate Bill 76, which is the judge's retirement bill, that is sitting. It will be heard next week. It's percolating. The only thing I can tell you is that there will be amendments. Um, there will be amendments to the bill. The bar commissioners uh, continue to stay neutral, as is uh, UJS officially. Um, 
the last bit of news, uh, uh, House Bill 1056, uh, which is a state bar bill that implements uh, the option on cumulative voting and so forth. We've discussed this in the past. That has been signed by the governor. Um, and so that's sitting good with a deferred implementation date pending the vote on HJR 10001, which is our constitutional amendment. Um, that has been delivered to the Secretary of State because it's a proposed constitutional amendment. It doesn't need the governor's signature. It goes straight down to the Secretary of State's office for placement on the ballot next uh, November. Uh, that concludes my report for, uh, for this week. There'll be one more, which I'll do late next week or the first of the following week. Have a good weekend.